All right, this video is going to show you how to get data from the internet and import it into Excel using get data from the web. And also it's going to show you how to use pivot tables. Uh, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, examine uh, the 30, the 90 day T-bill from the, from the United States 90 day T-bill. We're going to look at the data going back to 1990 and we're going to use pivot tables to summarize it. But first I'm going to show you how you have the data. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to open up a web, web browser. Uh, let's go ahead and open up uh, a new tab on my browser. And we're going to go, we could like uh, go to Google, probably the best way to do it. Let's Google, we'll go 90 day bill rates we'll Google that and what I want to do is I want to go to this one right here Department of Treasury and it's under the resource center under a charts and data center and we're going to go to daily and I'm going to get all of them. So I'm going to go down to all and I'm going to go go. And it might take a few seconds for it because this is going to get all the data all the way back to 1990. And you can see that we have all the daily data from 1990 all the way down uh, to the present date. Okay. Now what I want to do next is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, what I could do is I could simply highlight all this data all the way down to the bottom. And then I could right click and go copy and then go to Excel and paste it in. But I'm going to show you a different way to do it. So what we're going to do, we're going to go up here and we're going to highlight this URL up here. Right click and go copy. And then we'll open up Excel. Open up a new worksheet. And what we want to do, we want to go to the data tab. And we want to go to the Get External Data, and we're going to go from Web, and it's going to have this window here called New New Web Query. And if you want to, you can drag it out a little bit so you can see a little bit more what's going on. Oh, okay. And I'm going to go here. I'm going to right click. I'm going to paste that URL that it has got from over there. I'm going to go Go. And it says Waiting for. It's going to take a little bit. And where we want to look, you'll see it has a bunch of little yellow arrows. And we want to look for the one, we just want to get this table right here. So when I go here, it highlights what I want. So I want this table, so I'm going to click on this little arrow. It becomes a check mark. And then I click import. And Excel asks me, where do I want to import it? What cell? And I want to, I'm going to just go ahead and import it into cell A1, and I'm going to go OK. And it's going to say getting data. Now, what's different about this? This is an active, active web sheet. I mean, it's actually actively linked to the web. And if I want to, like, say they add another day on tomorrow, I could go here and go refresh, and it would refresh its data. So that's the difference between simply going to the website and copying this and pasting it in. Well, that wouldn't be an active link. But we were doing it right here. We were doing it right here as an active link. So. Uh, it's going to take it a second. And let's go ahead and wait. Now I'm going very fast, so you may have to pause it and go back and look at what I've done. But that's but you can always pause or go back. So no reason for me to go very slow. So I'll just wait. It's going to take a while depending on your internet connection. This is not responding, but don't worry about it. It says down here, copying web data to the sheet. Remember, it's it's probably like 6,000 rows or something, so it's a very large. Okay, so now it's in. If I can go down to the bottom. I can go down to the bottom here. You can see it goes all the way 
I'm recording this on the 10th, so it all goes all the way to yesterday. Now, if you go to the top, I never really told you what this has. It has it has different different periods of maturity for U.S. government debt. So this 33 month here, this is called this is what we use for the this is what's called the nine generally called the 90 day T bill, and this is the yearly yearly yield on each on each day. Okay, so back in 19, 1990 it was 7.83 percent. You go back to today, it's point or yesterday was 0.02 percent. So you're not making very much money on it, or 0.01 percent. So that's not very much money. This is a this is a 30 day. This is a 90 day. But anyway, in most time in finance, this is what we call the risk-free rate. A lot of people use now. This is a nominal risk-free rate, which means it's not adjusted for inflation. To adjust it for inflation, you have to do a little equation that's beyond the scope of this class. You could roughly adjust for inflation just by subtracting it off. So say, like last year was approximately two percent. So we'd actually have a real a real rate of return would be negative with it if you adjust this for inflation. Okay. Um, so what I want to do this this is so many this is over six thousand rows. So I want to summarize this data. Uh, the best way to summarize it, uh, I would maybe instead of having uh, every every day in the month of January, maybe I just want the average the average yield out of these. I'd want to get the average yield just for the month of January 1990. Okay, and I want the average yield. So I could go in here and I could go. I could write a pro a program, or I could go in there manually and calculate the average. But that's a lot of work. So I'm going to do something that maybe some of you haven't seen before. This is something very powerful, so it should be interesting to you. It's called a pivot table. So I'm going to click somewhere in this data. You can't be out here. You're going to be clicked in the data somewhere. And I'm going to go to Insert, Pivot Table. And it highlights around, is this what you want to do the pivot table? It is, so I'm just going to go OK. And then what it's going to do, it's going to start a new sheet. Okay. And so I was on sheet one before, and now I have a new sheet, and it's called a pivot, and it says pivot table tools here, because now I'm, if I click out here, it goes away, but if I click on here, I get my pivot table tools back in. Now what I want to do, I'm going to drag the date down here to row labels. Pivot table is very visual, so it's a lot of dragging and dropping, so it makes it very easy to use, even though it's deceptive because it's extremely powerful, but also, since it's visual, it's very easy to use. So I have the date here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click, I have to click on one of these dates, and I'm going to go under Options. Now yours may say Analyze, but it should be in the general area here on the left. And we're going to go to Group Field. And I have Months, I also want to click Years. So I want to summarize my Month and Years, and I'm going to go OK. And then, boom, it collapses it. So now instead of having 6,000 rows, and all of a sudden I'm summarizing the data, I'm going to be able to summarize it now I have 331 rows. Okay. So now I want to look at the 90-day the, the, the T-bill. So I'm going to go here to this three months. And I'm going to drag it in to values. So again, it's visual. So I just dragged it down here. And if you look over here, it put count to three months. So in January of 1990, I had 21 data points. In February, I had 19 data points. So if you look back here, in January, I had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. If you count them all, there's 21. But we don't want the count in there. We want it to have the average. We want to have the average value for the returns for these, for these 21. It wants to, I want to put the average in there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go over to where it says count. I'm going to click the down arrow and go to value field settings and go average and go OK. So now it has the average for each month, Okay, which is very cool. And then what we can do, we can make, we can graph this and see what it looks like. So I'm going to go, go to, uh, again, make sure you click somewhere on the data. And you're still going to, you're going to be on the options still. I'm going to go to pivot chart. And I'm going to go down here to line. And then go OK. And it's going to give me this really nice chart. And I'm going to drag it out. Now, if you look in your textbook, in chapter on chapter five on page 
page 76, that should look very close to the red line. Now, it's not exact because I use the 90 dp bill. If you look in the if you look at the notes on that graph, it says they use a they use strong corporations. So they use corporate bonds, the 90 day bond, short term bond. This is this is the federal government. So the graph, but the graph is going to be very similar to the red line. It's a short term raise because this is see so figure five two. It says short term and long term interest rates 1990 to 2013. Well, we're doing 1990 to 2015. Okay. So let's let's pick a long term rate. Now, if we look, some of these say not applicable. So the 20 years is not applicable. If you go further down, the 30 years says, so there's data missing on the 20 year and 30 year. So I'm not going to use those two. I'm going to use a 10 year bond. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go here to 10 year. And I'm going to drag it down. Again, now this says count, so I don't want count. I want to go click the down arrow, click value field settings. I'm going to change that to the average and go OK. And boom. So that should be very similar to the blue line. Now remember, it's not exactly the same as the blue line because I use corporate rates and I use federal government 10-year bonds. That blue line in the book on page 76 could be, could be, uh, uh, you know, 30-year bonds corporate, right? So anyway, it was very close to the same shape. So that shows you the power, you know, doing that by hand would have taken a lot of time. But very quickly, we were able to make, you know, do the main the main graphs we're talking about in, in Figure Five? The, you know the main things we're talking about in Figure Five Point Two. All right, so that's how to really quickly summarize data and do a graph using pivot tables. And so uh, hopefully that video will help you. I know I went kind of fast in class, or if you're if you're taking an online class, you can you can do this and and and. Uh, and it's kind of an interesting thing to do. All right.